bit of chunky goodness. Ooh, and it's bigger. That's a nice one. Look at that. We'll definitely clean that one up. That's a nice one. It's got nice detail all the way around. Very nice indeed. That's going to clean up nicely. So, these are a collection of different kinds of agates, but today we wanted to talk about seam agates. And how do you identify a seam agate? Is there any special way that you can tell a seam agate from, oh, a nodule or another nodule? or this honker that we got. Uh, there's a uh, YouTube short about this one. These are pretty nice, and you can see that there that is very much a sea maggot. But let's talk about why and what makes it a sea maggot as opposed to a nodule, okay? So let me go ahead and get uh, get this cleared away, and then we're gonna zoom up on this and show you generally what you're going to look for. So, here we have a sea maggot, right? Now, you can see that if I get that to where we can zoom on it. Pretty sure that's in zoom. You can see there's some subtle banding in there. Little inner sort of iris of, of white color and a few relatively soft, milky white bands around it. That's a pretty good example. But we can uh, look at a few other stones and uh, see how that detail happens a little better. You see that banding in there? Is that a, a little bit clearer for folks? Should be some nice, clear concentric banding showing up there. So this is a sea maggot. Now a sea maggot grows basically, or is formed, in a small sliver between two rocks. Now we're gonna grab a couple of rocks here and see if we can't help you understand that concept a little better. So it'd be a pocket in that uh, giant mass of stone. And in that pocket, fluid rich with chalcedony flows in, gets really hot, dries up, and coats either side of that seam, okay? Now it builds up over time and different fluid, uh, fluid concentrations and fluid chemistries flow back over this repeatedly, fill it up, dry it out, fill it up, dry it out, and then eventually the chasm is filled and you get a complete nodule. So let's find a complete one here. I got a couple of real small ones. These, uh, these completed nodules are really difficult to find. So here we go with two completed nodules. Let me show you these. These are very small. Sometimes you can get larger ones like the, like the big honker we showed. But what's, uh, what's a little bit special about these is that on these, a little bit of the host rock, you see that darker material right there? And you can almost see that texture. You see how it's really bumpy, like, uh, like it's, like it's um, a piece of jelly, right? You see that dark bit? That's the host rock. That's the basalt that it came out of. Now, agate is just slightly harder than basalt. So the basalt will wear away and sometimes give you a complete nodule. Other times, like with this one here, you can see that there's a little bit of chip out and so just starting to see that there's an agate there. You can see the little clear piece. Okay, now that's different than nodules. 
These nodules formed in what's called a vug, V-U-G, vug, or a pocket, if that, if that helps. Pretty common language is called a pocket, and that's basically a... We we'll use this stone as an example, and I'm going to spin this around so that you can see. Now, see there's a hole in that? It's, all right. Now, if this were basalt, that little hole would be called a vug or a pocket. The chalcedony, or the uh, silica-rich material that makes chalcedony, would flow over it, fill it, dry it out, refill it over and over and over again until the pocket was filled and a nodule was formed. <clears throat> now, does it make much difference what you call them? Well, probably not. But calling this sea maggot is about as correct as calling it a diamond. It's not a sea maggot. It may have formed in a horizontal depression or pocket in a rock, a, a vein or a seam of sorts, but there was so much movement when this formed that it became rather cloudy and muddled up with sediment. So not a sea maggot. And as we've said repeatedly, agates have bands, chalcedony does not. Chalcedony can form several different types of stones that are not agate. They look like it sort of resemble it and agates may form in or around that material but the entire piece couldn't possibly be called an agate it's just one small part of it so we have this example and that's great for for understanding that but then we have something like this this is technically an agate all right you can see that there's complex banding there's a lot of different spaces where banding occurs, but there's also plume material within it. So do you call it an, uh, a plume agate, a lace agate, a moss agate? Well, moss agate might be a little inappropriate, even though there are mossy structures within it. But this is primarily called a lace agate, and they do form quite close to where you're going to find banding and pluming. They both happen sort of in the same area and it's it's generally about the the speed at which the silicated material flows over that stone that allows it to develop in these particular ways, usually happening around moss-like or plume-like formations of sediment and silt. <clears throat> this example, we can actually see that that material has, uh, th in this particular nodule, I'm going to spin this around onto a side where we can see some of that banding right in here that banding is pretty obvious. And this is a nodule, not a seam. And it's basically, where does that line happen? Well, we can put a couple of these together in their various stages, and we can sort of look at that. It's, it's easy to tell. It's kind of like asking yourself, when does a canyon become a valley? I guess it's a perspective of shape, right? So if it goes from flat to bean-like or spheroid, round, sort of like a ball, the closer it gets to being round, we would call it a nodule. The closer it gets to being flat, elongated, long bands with the host rock on either side in a very thin form, we would call that a seam agate because it formed in the seam or crack of a rock. Pretty basic. It's not too hard. So there's a whole seam agate nodule. This one's been, been worked a little bit. You can see that. 
This one's kind of raw but cracked. But when you start getting more wedge shaped to round shape, we start to call them nodules. It will anybody really mess with you over it? Well, a couple of a couple of real, you know, Karens for the the effort might want to to dispute it or or get all mean. Doesn't matter because seam agates form in seams, generally vertical. When you have any kind of agate that starts forming closer to horizontal than vertical, generally you want to call it a plume agate, even though this one has banding. It would be more, more apt to call this a plume agate or a, uh, or a seam, well you could call it a seam agate, but it would be, generally speaking, not the way. I know that sounds weird, but uh, I didn't make up these rules. There's more plume structure than band structure. And that, that seems to be the general line of where you would, you would talk about that. So if it's more plume than band, it's a plume agate. If it's more band than anything, it's a seam agate. But, the, but it has to be, generally speaking, thin, banded, and occurring in a rock seam. That's, that's really all it is. Now that seam doesn't have to be basalt. Seam agates can form in any already formed pocket of stone. So it doesn't have to be basalt. It could happen in jasper. We've, we've seen many examples of agates forming in jasper. In fact, in a couple of my videos, we've found agates formed in jasper. But it's just basic. So now we know that sea maggots form in the crack of a rock, just like uh, nodule agates form in a pocket. Pretty basic. They are cool, though. Most people tend to tend to like these for art projects. Now these nodules, you slice these, you know, slice them or polish them, and you make rings, dome them up, give them cabochon cuts. Whereas seam agates, most people don't, don't realize what you can do with them. So for this one for scale, we're going to look at this and put, a, put an engineer's roll on it. And you see that's roughly... Uh, oh. Here we go. Let's get that on there. You can see we got about a third of an inch, quarter to a half, right? So what do you do with these? You would slice it sort of along that line and get several slices out of it, right? You take those slices and you can put them in uh, sort of... Uh, uh, channel settings, little little bead that goes all the way around it, yeah? And you could affix a bale and hang that from a chain. The idea of these is it uh, the subtle coloring and the uh, subtle construction of, of how the banding lays out in this agate. You would, uh, you would mount this, let's say, piece like that, and it would pick up the light you know, so if it's cut about that size, it would pick up the light when hanging from a neck, and this would uh, drape down the center line of the neck toward the uh, toward the sternum. And uh, if this were were hanging on on a uh, uh, a young lady, uh, then then of course the light would pick that up, and sort of the glow of the stone would attract some attention to to that particular area of the body. The same is done with earrings, so you would do the same thing to draw the attention to the ears as opposed to uh, the bosom. I was trying to think of a good word there. So, generally, sea maggots are, are, are used uh, in jewelry for, like, earrings, necklace uh, pendants, that sort of thing. 
Uh, usually you won't drill them and polish this side because there's really nothing of visual interest to see out of that stone. All of the visual interest occurs within the banding and agates. So I hope that little lesson helped. So it's the difference between flat and rounded. It's, it's, it's either in a seam or in a pocket, but both ways, they're both agates. It's just a little bit of a description. So if there's any questions, please let me know in the comments, and I'll do my best to answer any of those questions, especially if you have a stone that sort of rides that line, because really, even this one, somebody might try to call a sea maggot, even though it's a whole nodule, because you can see that it's got host rock attached all the way around. See those little specks there? Those are, those are host rock still embedded in it. So we can tell that it formed in a rounded way as opposed to eroding down. And the same thing is here. You see that that's where the rock attachments were. All that little sort of bumpy material, you can still see the host rock there. Not too bad. Anyway, figured I'd share that.